me and Swan got this here record coming out, you know, what now. We want to let y'all know how it go. So I want to ask y'all one question. All the homeboys out there, are y'all having sex? Hold on, hold on. Listen. Throw your hands up in the air if you are. Listen. Oh, boy. All right, we're bluffing. Have any of y'all homeboys got burned? So, Buster, let me ask you one more question. Do y'all know what these are? Y'all know what these are? Yo, yeah. Swan, tell them. All I want is protection. All I really want. Baby, please, no infections. Now, here's a skeezer. Come off the block, and he's known to the girls as Hot the Trot. Now a name like that was easy to earn because the kid'll give your pussy a third degree burn. So yo, all I want is for Texas. That's all I really want, baby. Please, no infections. Now y'all bust this here. Now I know girls that can be rather outrageous They lay down with guys knowing that they're contagious They give a good fucking but by the time they're through You got a bad case of cock barbecue So yo All I want is protection That's all I really want Baby please no The last one I once knew a girl that had VT. Yo, she had the nerve to try to give it to me. I was just about to fuck her, but I stopped short because the bitch pussy smelled just like a Newport. So, yo. All I want is protection. That's all I really want, baby. Please, no Hold on, huh? Chill. Chill, let me go into this here. Yo, now y'all already know who Swan is. Y'all know business. I got to tell you who I am, all right? So, bust this here. <laughs> Well, I'm a pimp. I'm letting it be known that I'm employing young girls to ones that's grown. I'm also a king that sits upon the throne. In other words, I'm b -b 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 bad to the bone. A lady kind of zoo up. A sex shooter. I get the job done like Roto Buddha. So all you sexy ladies, don't even think maybe. Play like Melissa Morgan and do me, baby. Hold up, 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 hold up man. You see that girl Shanita out there? You know, she need a new hairdo, she need new clothes. She need a facelift. You see that one, man? Yo, but let me ask you, how many lovely ladies in the house? Could all the lovely ladies put one hand up in the air? If you look good, point yourself out. Well, listen, let me tell you. I see some lovely ladies, but your biz, Yo. Have you ever seen a girl that you thought was legit when really she wasn't about jack shit? Well, I met one that had tried the front or telling me that it was that time of month because we was at the crib about ready to get busy. Then all of a sudden, she became dizzy. I said I thought that we was going to have some sex. She said, wait a minute so I can change my cotex. I said, hold on. Now what's going on? I don't want no big daddy junior boy. Never mind. Forget it, that's quite all right. No, I'm not knocking boots tonight. Cause you're on your menstruation. It will go away. You're on your menstruation. And it only lasts for five more days. Yo, what about the rest of them, Kane? Bust it. I once knew this girl by the name of Carla. She used to use a soda bottle to get hot. Now I fucked her one time, and when I was done, I cashed the pussy in for a nickel refund. Then there was this girl by the name of Betty. The bitch had titties, sharp as a machete. She jumped on top of me and wouldn't behave. And when she rubbed them in my face, she gave me a close shave. Then there was this girl by the name of Joyce. The bitch was a bum, but she swore she was Joyce. A low-class ass and ass word to Mills. I opened up her pussy and it said, No sound! Last but not least, there's a girl named Mary. The bitch had a pussy that was awful hairy. I opened it up. To take a look down there, I saw a big forest fire. It's Smokey the Bear! Welcome hey, yo, back yo, to the I'm Encyclopedia Hip Hop Podcast. Today, we're talking Juice Crew. Uh, arguably, even though people shouldn't argue, the greatest crew collective in hip hop history. And I'm here with the man, 50 Grand, ATL, by way of South Kakalaki. Uh, See him on Twitter at 12 Cal, a host of 12 radio show. Uh, yeah. Tell the people what's up. Get on, get on the pod because you know you eat chicken. 
<laughs> Yo, what's going on, people? Once again, it's your boy Twelve Kyle. Good, good to be back, man. On on, on the podcast, man. As always, man. Um, anytime you get a chance to sit down and chop it up with a hip hop historian such as such as yourself, um, you know it, it's always a good thing. So, and uh, you know the the idea of talking about the Juice Crew, um, which is one of my favorite crews, and probably arguably, like you said, one of the best crews uh, from from hip hop period. Uh, I, I couldn't I couldn't you know pass the opportunity to you know sit down and politic ditto about mm-hmm. it. So. Let's do it. All right. So, so when were you first exposed to the Juice Crew? What was your, your Juice Crew memories when you when you heard? I mean, was it was your introduction uh, uh, the symphony? Well, when when were you uh, into the Juice Crew? You know what? I, 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 that's a good question because I, I thought about it. Uh, when we were talking about it before, and I can't remember the exact year. I actually had to try to Google it to see when they first came out. Um, I want to say it was right. My first introduction was just the mere mention of the Juice Crew, and and just for those of you listening, like he said, I'm from South Carolina, so you know, obviously in the mid '80s there was no internet or anything like that. So you know, you got the music. We always got the music down south later than it did. Of course, music, hip hop, music originated in the north, and then it would trickle down. So if you, unless you had family or friends that was sending you music you know you probably if a song came out and they were playing it on wbls in new york you probably heard it down south maybe about two months later so i remember my next door neighbor he he lived in he he had family that that was in new york he actually moved down south from new york but he would go up there all the time during the summers and i remember him coming back we were talking about hip-hop and he was like man you, you gotta hear the juice crew I was like, Juice? I mean, just the name sounded funny to me. I'm like, Juice Crew? I remember, I distinctly remember laughing at him, like, like who the hell is the Juice Crew? And he was trying to tell me, like, who the Juice Crew? And the only name I could remember was Marley Mall, because that's pretty simple. Uh, Marley Mall. I'm like, okay, Juice Crew, Marley Mall. I, like, I don't know who that is. But, um, and it wasn't until later, you know, maybe another five, four or five months, it was when I heard the symphony. And I think that's when it kind of all clicked that you know this is who he, who he was talking about. But my first introduction of the Juice Crew, I did not. It was just based off that conversation. Mm. And um, and like I said, we didn't. I didn't hear the music probably for another uh, you know three or four months after that. But um, you know once I got introduced to it uh, and introduced to the crew, man, and kind of had an idea as to who was in the group. And 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 it's something we're gonna talk about tonight. I know you know back then. It was really, at least for for fans like me, and pretty sure like you too, it was really about who you were down with. So anytime you can make a correlation between, okay, well, yeah, this person is cool, and he's down with such and such, so if he's down with him, then he got to be cool. You know what I'm saying? So like if you knew Marley Marl was cool, but you didn't know Kane, and then when you realized Kane and Marley Marl was in the same crew, it almost validated if, if you thought Marley Marl was cool without knowing anything about Kane, Kane's coolness was validated because you just figured that Marley Marl was cool. Yeah, he's he like, no lames, you yeah, know what I'm saying? He's, like, he's not going to hang out with some asshole. So obviously, exactly. obviously, dude's nice. Yeah, it was it was all about the introduction to people. If you weren't down with somebody, it was like you really had to go out and be real nice. You know, and that's, I, I think that led to. Um, um, what we'll get get into later, the bridge wars, because mm-hmm. um, yeah, well, um, so I think the um, the first time I heard about the Juice Crew was, I think it was I guess eighty seven, okay, eighty seven when um, around Have a Nice Day came out, and you know Shantae was like that's one queen of the crew with the Juice, and um, and All Stars came out. Um, so let's go with the uh, core members. The core members, because some people we're not gonna count. So <laughs> let's say we got Shantae, we got Shan, we got Kane, Bismarck, G Rap, Craig G, and Master Ace. Out of yep. out of that, out of the core members, there we're not gonna count Molly Mall because he ain't spitting. 
And we're not gonna count. <laughs> we're not gonna count Mr. Magic because he's not spitting. Right. And we could count T.J. Swan, but you know he ain't spitting. He's singing. Yeah, he's not spitting. So who's your favorite member? Favorite member, hands down, is Kane. Now, all your MCs, let's talk turkey. turkey. Where did you get the nerve to think that you can hurt me? I roll on rappers just like a vigilante. I give a bullet, flesh wound, or an eye jammy. That's homicide from rhyme supplied. Miles are bright as day. Yours are tales from the dark side. I'm the commander. You're nothing but a rookie. Ain't no hair on my chest, but I'm one tough cookie. Explode across stage like dynamite. And if I start rocking hard, then I just might rock too hard. Before you will soften, and rhymes you adopted will become orphans. As I give birth to seeds of the earth, put rhymes in existence. So don't miss this essay. I just may lecture, and I bet you whatever I express indeed it will affect you. Captivate you to be exact. And all competition appear to be weak. I meant to say whack. A vision of blur. Just thinking of competing with me. I say, huh? No way, Jose. No day, no triumph. And if you want my opinion, why um, may I suggest that you calm your nerve before you get served? Just like an hors d'oeuvre, so. Um, I think, uh, I, when I first heard Kane, he just sounded, I think the thing that really got me, man, was he sounded real smooth. And I mean, like, for those of you listening, and you know exactly what I'm talking about, there was, uh, from, the t- from hip hop's inception, up until right around the time, you know, Rakim, Kane, all of those guys came out 85, 86, 87, around that time. A lot of MCs, their voices, phonically, their voices were a little high pitched. Not high pitched like a girl, you know what I'm saying? But they, they had higher pitched voices. So Kane, one of the things that stood out to me initially, cause, and, and, and I'll just to to, to prove to the point if you listen to Sh- think about the first time you heard Shan and how high Shan's voice is and then think about Kane and his voice is a little bit lower and it's a little bit more baritone and it just it sounded really smooth so I was like man yo who is this dude and then I remember the first time I saw Kane in a video I'm like yo this dude is not only is he he sounds cool but he had like that cool look you know mm-hmm. and he was, you know, like back then, you know, that was a big thing for us because he was dark skinned and I'm dark skinned. So I was like, oh man, we, you know, we, <laughs> it's almost like we got a little cult hero here. Um, you know, but he was real smooth with it. And obviously, as he moved on, as far as his style, you know, seeing Kane in suits and stuff, like he was all, Kane was always sharp, all, never bummy. You know, um, I think appearance was something that, uh, that was, you know, was just as important to him as rhyming because Kane was, you know, definitely about the ladies. Um, but he wasn't necessarily alienate his male, alienating his male fans either. But um, but yeah, man, I think uh, for me, that was one thing that really stood out, man. Kane, his delivery, um, and then like I said, once I got a chance to see him in a video, um, that was uh, that kind of did it for me. But Kane has always been my favorite. Um, just his rhyme styles. Uh, he At the time that he came out, there, there wasn't anybody that sounded like him. Uh, and I think that was one of the things that really made him. And I don't know if he necessarily went for a certain sound, or less, or the record label said, "Hey, you should sound like this." He was Kane was just different. He yeah. just had his own little flow. Um, Kane and Heavy D were probably the first rappers that I can remember that had really good backup dancers. And I mean, like, I don't mean just like guys just moving around, like School and Scrap could could dance, you know, and uh, of course, uh, Heavy D had the boys, you know, they could dance. Um, but yeah, I, Kane was, was, was the dude for me. Kane was just, um, and I mean, I had my other favorites, but first and foremost, it was, it was Big Daddy Kane for sure. Yeah, and shout outs to Houdini, who had the, yeah. the ill dancers, who later became UTFO. Yeah, shout out to Kanko yeah. Kid and uh, Doc Ice. Yeah, they had dancers. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I could see that. Now, if if we're talking favorites, if we're talking favorites, Kane is my fourth favorite. Okay. He's my fourth favorite. Now, if we're talking lyrically, it's a different it's a different right. list. Um, but it's if if you listen to the show, if you follow me on Twitter, 
There's no question who my favorite member is. Shantae. It's Queen of Rocks, Shantae. <laughs> Shantae is uh, almost solely directly responsible for me falling in love with hip hop. So, um, Shantae. Now, she, we would say she's 1A, 1B would be uh, the cool genius of rap. Right. You know, who I, um, I'm often on my island by saying that he's the second best lyricist in hip hop history. Yeah, you definitely. <laughs> but, you know, I don't think anybody else is touching dude except for except for the guy. But anyway, yeah. um, okay, so let's do it like this: rank the core members from uh, your your favorite to least favorite. Core members from my favorite to least favorite. So um, we got Kane first. Kane first. Then I got to go with. Uh, I gotta go with G Rap, uh, and and I'll be the first to admit, like it took me a minute to warm up to G Rap, to be honest, and I and I don't know why it, it took me, like I guess maybe it's because I caught his album late, the, his first album, um, but where all of my buddies were really really on to G Rap, like I was kind of, like I I didn't I didn't really I don't know if I necessarily gave him a chance, but I was just behind on him, and then like when I really really started studying what he was talking about and you know he was talking about the streets and everything I, I just that's when I really became a fan once I gave him a chance I, I don't know why I didn't and to this day it kind of <laughs> baffles me why I didn't initially give him a chance even though he was down with the crew you know what I'm saying but um yeah G-Rap would probably be second um third I gotta go with uh gotta go with Biz mm-hmm. gotta go with Biz um just for the humor aspect of it, Biz was somebody I think that we all liked, at least like me and my buddies liked, because Biz didn't take. I mean, if you make a song called Picking Boogers, I mean, <laughs> and you know, at the time we were like, we might have just been getting into middle school, seventh, eighth grade. So, you know, so something like that, a song called Picking Boogers, I mean, that's going to be comical to us anyway. Mm-hmm. So, um, so it, it's uh it's so that was funny, um so I, I'd have to go with Biz, and then Shantae of course, um Shantae really she stood out to me because I think Shantae well I'm not gonna say I think Shantae was the first female in hip hop that we heard who could hold her own. Tis the season to be serving. <laughs> you cause it's deserving I let you slide I tried to be nice well now I'm mad so pay the price I'm Shantae so listen close cause they're gonna put this in the motherfucking post Shantae yeah that's me let's put it on the line gotta give the suckers just a piece of my mind because they took it too far let's put them straight my name is Shantae and no not too late for you to give up or just say sorry plug you in like my Atari give you a shot do your body yes to prove to you Shantae is best Shantae is the best I am the best I am the best higher than the rest plus consider fresh now you made me mad you know what I'm saying she wasn't paired with a with another other female like salt and pepper or finesse and quest or you know anybody else she was, she was by herself she stood alone and then you bring her in the crew and lyrically she was just as good as the guy she was rhyming with and i don't think that we've seen the likes of that in a while well i, well, I take that back we didn't see that probably until for like another uh, 15 years yeah yeah rod digger <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what i'm saying but um and and, and i don't for, for one second, you know, we, we you know when, when people start talking about, even as we go into the future, when you talk about Kim and Foxy, you know, whether or not Big or Jay wrote their rhymes and stuff. I mean, you're, you're close personal friends with Shantae, so I'm pretty sure oh you know. Oh, my God. Listen, listen, listen. <laughs> she, you know that she wrote her own rhymes. So she was just dope, man. And, and I mean, and I she think. She did have some help on a couple of tracks by Cool G and Kane. She might have. She but, might have. But, yeah. I, I, I won't. You know what? E, I've. I'll take your word for that. I've never inquired and never 
sought to figure out whether or not she did or she didn't because I didn't want that to kind of taint the picture that I have of Shantae. Yeah. My thing but, um, about Shantae, though, is the, the joint, the, the Roxanne's Revenge, mm-hmm. which, again, uh, is my probably third favorite hip-hop song of all time, but the, the original version is all freestyle. Mm-hmm. Right. Guys, and you know that's true. Uh, let me tell you and explain them all to you. I met this dude with the name of a hat. I didn't even walk away. I didn't give him no rap, but then he got real mad and he got a little tired. If he worked for me, you know he would be fired. His name is Kango, and that is true. He ain't got money and he ain't got the loot. And every time that I see him, he's always a begging. And all the other girls that he's always trying to lay it every time that he sees. He's I mean, it was she just. She would just spit, and then it was like, all right. I mean, and, and to go to your point about, you know, being down with the crew and holding her own, she's the only, you know, maybe some things have changed since, you know, 1999, because, I, you know, I tap out around there. But, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know, but she was the only one. She was so dope that male rappers was dissing her. <laughs> you know, they was they would and she would battle them. She would battle them on wax, and she would be at on stage going one on one versus male MCs. Female MCs didn't even they didn't even bother. But you know, like if you I don't know if you can Google it or go on YouTube. And she's battling Busy B on stage. She's battling Fru Kwan from Stetson Side. Right? <laughs> she's battling. A rapper them. like him, I have so much sorrow. Look at those clothes that he probably went and borrowed so he could get on stage. Try to do a show, but I came out here just to let you know. My name is Shante, and I just don't play when I rock to the beat. Yes, I do it this way. I rap mighty fast just to bust him on his ass. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Two minutes left, two minutes left, two minutes left. Take a deep breath. One, two, one, two, three. Hit it. I give you credit for giving a try, but Roxanne, suck my dick and die. You Two. can't really rap cause you ain't down, bitch. You not even the talk of the town. Two cars on the set and I'm your best bet, young ladies. Take it, I'll get you wet and I'll Four. fuck you up. I'll fuck you down, Roxanne. One, two, get your three. shit on town. Get your shit on now. What? Wait a minute. Let's get this straight. You just suck a motherfucker and your little bitty prick. You ain't got shit with your little bitty dick. You told me to suck it, then you tell me to fuck it. One, two, one, two, three, hit it. Say ho! Say ho! Ho! That's what two. his mother is. And and Karis One is calling her out, and Steady B is calling her out. I mean, that's how dope you are when you know the, your contemporaries is like, I don't see gender. Exactly. She, she nice. I'm, you know, but again, this is back in the good days of hip hop when rule or objective number one was to be seen as the best Mm -hmm. and I um, tweeted earlier about this that the difference or the one of the main difference about hip hop was it's the only music genre where you just wanted to be the best seen as the best and better than the next person better than everybody else it was that's never that's not like an r&b luther one like yeah i'm singing because right. i'm better than levert right. you know right. <laughs> <laughs> they, they i'm sunning i'm sunning levert b <laughs> yeah you know you know you know bobby brown went like man fuck stevie wonder <laughs> right know? right 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 so but that you know that's what made hip-hop stand out because it was like if you think about the early days it was like blah 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 i'm the best blah i'm the i'm the illest i'm the nicest and if you don't think so, then say something. And, and that was it. Entertaining was a byproduct of that and secondary. But right. the primary goal was to get the respect of your peers as nice. But anyway, exactly. um, so 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 you got you got you said Kane, G Rap, Biz, Shante. Now you got uh, Tragedy, Sp- uh, Mass, Mass Ace, and Shan left. 
Um, I would go with Ace. Oh, and you got Craig G. Yeah, I would go with Ace, Shan, Tragedy, then, you know, Ace, Shan, Craig G, then Tragedy. Um, not as big a fan as I am of the top hat, top tier of the uh, of the crew. Mm-hmm. And that's not to say, I mean, like, I, I, and it's funny because, like, I wasn't, I wasn't, like, for lack of a better term, sold on Master Ace. And then as the years progressed, you know, he kind of, things kind of died off for him. And then when he came back, I don't even know if he necessarily left, but his later material that he put out, I was like, yo, Ace still got it. You know, <laughs> like, you know, and people were like, man, are you serious? Like, Ace always had it. And I'm like, ah, yeah, but I wasn't that big. You know, like, I, I rock with him, but I wasn't just going to go buy his album. I guess that's what I'm saying. Right. Um, you know, but all of those dudes, man, they still, even even though I wasn't as big a fan, like I wasn't as big a fan of Craig G as I was Kane, but, you know, if Craig, if you heard Craig G on something, you knew that he was, it was popping, you know, and he usually brought it when he, when he did. So I think that was one of the things that, um, you know, kind of stood out about the whole crew was that even over time, it, it never left. Like, I think if, if you, if, if the Juice Crew got together tomorrow and said, okay, let's do a compilation album, it'll still be banging. I mean, I, in fact, I wish they would, you know, because they oh, could, yeah. they, they could, they have a lot, I think, to give to. Now, I'm pretty sure with their schedules and you know everybody's kind of going different directions. They're not doing nothing. <laughs> well, I mean, you talk to Shantae. Oh so my I'm, god. You probably know what she, what, what she up to, man. She, 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 she hanging out. Where she, where she at? Where, where she live? She's doing shows. She's probably somewhere in Memphis. I don't know. Anyway. Can, I, can I get on 12 radio? Uh, I've been asking for two years. Can, can you? Can you send her a text or call her? Well, you know, call, call me on the phone. She hasn't been on my show. <laughs> We're going to farm around. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um, if I was ranking them as far as favorite, i go Shantae, G-Rap, Biz, Kane, Craig G, Shan, Tragedy, then Ace. Okay. I was... I. I didn't. I didn't get. Uh, let's just say I didn't get Master Ace. I think what turned me off of Master Ace is when he went to the West Coast and the, did like sitting on Chrome. And I think that's probably where I kind of, you know, was like, oh, I don't know about that Ace, you know. And that's when people were telling me like, you know, no, Ace still got it. And I'm like, ah, uh, it just sounded so different from what I was used to, you know. And, and at the time, the West was winning, so. I understand to a degree, you know, it was more of a probably more of a business move than anything else. But at the same time, you just you still remember Master Ace from Master Ace. You remember him from the Juice Crew. You remember him from Spitting. Not necessarily, like you said, sitting on Chrome. Man, I was like, <laughs> man, I mean, even the album cover. I'm like, man, get out of here with that. I'm like, what happened? I mean, do when he was supposed to. He wasn't even supposed to be on the symphony anyway. But anyway, uh, <laughs> that's now lyrically. If I was ranking them lyrically, I'd probably go G Rap Kane, Craig G. Of course. And then Shannon Tragedy is kind of tied up. And then Shantae, Biz, and, and Master Ace is still last. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but they if you look at it, they had some lyrical powerhouses in that crew. I mean, a lot of crews have that one member who's a standout, and then everybody else is just, you know, they okay. But this one, how, how do you think if, and I know it's tough to compare because they're different genres, but how do you think they stack up if you put them against the Wu? The the Juice Crew in their prime and the Wu in their prime. Um, and I know that's a tough, quite tough comparison. It's tough, and I would still uh, stack up and say the Juice Crew only because as nice as Wu-Tang is and as nice as the Juice Crew is the Juice Crew is more versatile they're they're still different you know mm-hmm. so like if if you're not well versed in Wu-Tang you might not be able to tell the difference between um uh, uh Jizza and Inspector Deck you okay. might be like, I don't okay. know whose verse that is. I don't know right. who that is. You right, know right, Ghostface right, right. because of the voice. You obviously know Dirty. Right, right. But, and you know, Ray, you might be like, well, is that Ray or is that? But, and they're still kind of talking the same thing, regardless mm. of, you know. But then the Juice Crew, you got Kane about the uh, banger chick. 
You got G, <laughs> G Rap about to shoot somebody. You got Shan on Speed Boy. You got Sean Page just dissing everybody. You got Craig G spitting. So he's like, and then you got Biz, you know, farting and you know, so right, right, but, it's, right. but it's all nice. So I mean, I would I would go that route. Now lyrically, as a collective, Wu Tang what, might be better, but as an overall package, I would go Juice Crew. What okay. about you? And you know that I, I agree with you. I think it, it's it's tough because, like you said, you comparing eras. But if I had to go, just overall talent, I think the Juice Crew is probably more top heavy because if I go with just like my my top ten, top ten. Look, we, we've argued at nauseum about our top ten MCs. If I go top or top five, if I go top ten, G Rap and Kane are in my top five. There's not a Woo member in my top. 15 I guess hmm. you know what I'm saying so and yeah. that's no knock I love the Wu but I think if you go round for round pound for pound I think what happens is is that there's a slight drop off okay you go you go Kane you go G-Rap you go Shantae and then there's but the, but those three are so high and then there's a, a slight drop there's not that I guess what I'm saying is there's not big that big a drop off between 3, 4, 5 and 6 wherein if you go Wu you got you saying that you saying the drop you saying the drop off between Meth and you got is a, is exactly. a big ass clip. <laughs> exactly, it, it's just a little bit bigger. You know, you got and, and 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 I don't even think lyrically, like even like somebody like Meth, I think can be dope when he wants to be. The question is, when does he want to be? You know, but Ray and, and Ray and Ghost will bring it all the time, and Ray and Ghost have the possibility of moving up that lyrical ladder if you will in the top into the top 15 top 20 whatever whatever um but i think g rap and kane with the history and what they've done are solidified in that in my opinion so i don't really know that those top two you take the top two from juice crew and then you take the top two from woo uh you know it's it's not it's not the same yeah now, now that they don't have the same commercial success obviously the woo was but it was a di- woo came through at a different day and time yeah but one could come to the conclusion that if you didn't have the Juice Crew, you wouldn't have had the Woo. Oh, no, no, no doubt. Uh, clearly. <laughs> um, okay, let's uh, let's 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 play favorite song here. What's your favorite Kane song? Favorite Kane song has to be probably Raw. Hmm. Raw. Right. Um, uh, between somewhere between Raw and Smooth Operator. Um. Uh, Shouts to smoking a black and mild before we knew what black and mild <laughs> <Yeah>. was. <laughs> um, smooth operator was cool, man, because like, um, I just remember I was in like what seventh grade, and like in my hometown, shout out to Florence, South Carolina. Uh, we used to there was a local radio station. They had the request hour. So, you know, all these guys that were calling the radio station and trying to get on, everybody from school trying to get on. And I called the radio station and I finally got on. And it was like, and so they were asking me, it was like, what song you want us to play? What song you want us to dedicate? I was like, um, I said, man, play uh, Smooth Operator, Big Daddy Kane. I said, cause I'm so smooth like that. So that, <laughs> so that was, so the dudes, he, he gave me the shout out over the air. He's like, you know, shout out to Kyle. He said, cause he's so smooth like that. So that was like the little running joke the next day at school. Like, yo, he's so smooth. So that was, so Smooth Operator has always been like one of my favorites from Kane. Um, and like I said, he was, he was like our little cult hero at the time. So, um, yeah, I would say raw and uh, and smooth operator. What about uh, Bismarck? Um, vapors. Radio, TV, and even the press say what's the meaning of V A P O R S. The meaning of this word, without no doubt, means nobody wanna be that one you're down and out. Now when you established and got a lot of money, everybody wanna be your buddy and honey. Like tall buildings, they call skyscrapers. Can you feel it? Surprisingly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the reason, and it wasn't anything lyrical, anything like that, but. Uh, just the whole concept of vapors, of the fact of getting becoming successful, and you know, or starting, starting at one, one at one place, and you know, not you know, chicks not really checking for you, the world not really checking for you, and then you make your way up, 
and I always felt like even at a young age that I was going to attain some level of success and I, and you know and so and, and in my eyes the, the girls who didn't want to talk to me then you know they were going to be sweating me once I got a chance to shine and you know I mean reality happens <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> exactly um uh G rap uh streets of new york streets of new york um it's a great beat the beat yeah man it just i still remember the first time i heard it um Blind my name man uh, plays the sax he just he had it on tape and we just i just remember just i remember him putting the tape and he was playing it and as i was listening to g rap spit and the beat i just kept looking at the boom because he had a, he had a huge boom box i just kept looking at his boom box like where is this coming from like because we had never heard anything like that before so yes uh definitely uh streets of new york um let's see let's see what about shan um not really had a favorite but if i if i had to say one um outside of the bridge uh i say kill that noise Cause that was, cause that was just a popular. I'm, I'm pretty sure where you grew up, it's popular saying, "Kill that noise." You know, anytime instead yeah. of telling somebody to shut, man, kill that noise. You know, like that. <laughs> you would always, you would almost want somebody to say, "Shut the hell up" before you say, "Kill that noise." <laughs> kill that noise. <laughs> <laughs> because like that was the ultimate diss, man. Kill that noise. It's like, that, that's basically saying, like, everything that's coming out of your mouth is noise. It's not even it's coherent. Not even, it's not even relevant. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Kill that noise. So. Yeah, kill that noise was, was the one for me. Now, now, do you have a favorite Shantae Tragedy, uh, Master A's song, Craig G song? Um, any of those? Shantae would be obviously Roxanne, um, Roxanne's Revenge. Um, like I said, just because how hard she was on it, um, and uh, not really any for Master A's or, or Tragedy, honestly. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, that 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 was that was that was the thing. And like I said, for Shantae, it was huge for me because and and i just remember too like the female friends that i had when they got a chance to hear shantae they were like because you know all almost all and you you probably went through it at your school too, almost all the girls flocked to salt and pepper all the girls flocked mm -hmm. to salt and pepper they, they good looking and they had the moves and when the push it video came out they had spandex on you know shout out to spinderella who hasn't been on the show either but shout out to spin and um <laughs> so you know so everybody was kind of, all the chicks were kind of flocking there, but, but Shantae, man, when she came out, man, I just knew like three or four chicks, man, that really were into Shantae because she was like spitting. It wasn't no, you know, it wasn't about push it. It wasn't about tramp. It wasn't about nothing like that. Like it wasn't, it wasn't really commercial or anything like that. Like she was just raw. And I knew three or four chicks that was really, really into Shantae. I mean, they were I mean, She was, she was really raw. I mean... Number one, she had that voice, mm -hmm. but I mean, she was spitting, but she was cursing and she was, nice. <laughs> she was raunchy. Like this is like '85, you know. She, um, the 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 when she battling Sparky D, she like <laughs> Sparky D. She, Sparky, shout out to uh, Sparky D and the Flake Girl. That's been a long time. What the hell is Sparky? What car wash does Sparky D work at? Shout out to Sparky D and the Play Girls. Uh, uh, Moski and, uh, and, and and Lisa. Um, yeah. Uh, 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 Slim Moski and, uh, and uh. <laughs> anyway, because she she was on that joint. She was like, uh, and what this was like eighty five. She's like um, eighty five. A penny, a nickel, hurt you, fucked yourself with a motherfucking pickle. We were like. <laughs> Yeah. What's going on? Yeah, and that's not something that you've heard on the Salt Pill album. That's not something you would have heard from Vanessa Sinquest. You didn't oh, hear, I mean, you didn't hear shit like that in 84, 85 from anybody. anybody right, 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 right. Let alone a chick. And she was like 16. <laughs> so, wow. But um, uh, if, if, if I was going to go favorites, obviously I'm going to go Revenge for Shantae. Mm -hmm. uh, G-Rap is either Ill Street Blues Ah, damn it! I forgot about it. Yeah, 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 that's 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 probably my second favorite. Because because my man, still one of my favorite lines in hip hop history. I'm hoping you got springs and wings on your shoes, but you lose. Cause I got the ill street blues. You lose. Cause I got the ill street blues. 
That man said he was on the roof. He said, I hope you got some wings or some springs on your shit. <laughs> <laughs> like you're going to hit the ground and spring back up. Yeah, or, or I hope you hope you can fly. That shit killed me. Because, I, I mean, cause, uh, just a small line like that mm-hmm. meant so much. I was just like, I, I'm, I miss hip-hop when you would listen to something and you would hear something different every time. Right. You you listen to the song or you say, Oh, that's what he meant because literally if you listen to the verse, he's taking you the verse, he's taking the dude up to the roof. So you're like, all right. And then he's saying, Buck, 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 take that with you on the way down, meaning I'm gonna shoot you and you're gonna fall off the roof. And then he says, right. I hope you got some wings or some springs on your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that that always tickled me. So um uh, G Rap would be Ill Street Blues or Truly Yours. They could be Truly Yours. I did a, um, a post about Truly Yours on the website, so if you if you're listening, go check that out. Um, where he disses the chick and her her boyfriend. Um, Biz Mart is nobody beats the Biz. Yeah, because yeah. um, he, he scratch he's scratching in Shante. Uh, he got the fly like the eagle. Uh, sample, you got Swan, so I'm gonna go there with that one. And the big, the bass line is crazy. Hey, this Nobody beats the biz. Nobody beats the biz. Nobody beats the biz. Nobody, nobody beats the biz. 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 Nobody. Um, Kane is no question is half stepping. Mm-hmm. Oh, that, no doubt. That's when I heard that song, I was just like, you know, this dude is crazy with it. Um, and the video, you know, in the, uh, the suit, the shark yeah. skin suit. The video was, <laughs> the video was crazy. <laughs> you got the girls with the no pain, no cane crop top on. <laughs> um, Craig G. It'd be smoothing up the rough spots or take the bait. MCs, get a grip, relax your lip. Here comes a rapper that flows and never quits. Craig G on call with the composition. That's a proposition to my opposition. You wanna step? Well, yo, wear your trap shoes. Or take your royalty check and buy crack dudes. Rappers are taught them to make no one want them. And if I die down, my raps will come back and haunt them. Highly explosive like nitro blistering. Just like a nail file Compared to other MCs with the stale style Been in this for five years To only hear live cheers And I'm one that will continue to strive with Others have failed and got blown like a jet stream And if my records don't sell I will get beat I'll come back and prove that I'm great To hook them and reel them in So take the beat If you ever heard those okay. joints Damn, take- you took me back I ain't heard take the beat in a long time <laughs> Yeah, if you ever heard those joints You damn sure gotta check those out Um, Shan It'd be left me lonely. It had the quintessential TJ Swan hook, and, he, uh, and nobody did a, a love song like that, you know. She used to tell me that she loved me all the time. I turned to her and say that I'm infatuated by a lovely smile. Someday soon we're gonna walk the aisle She say you're my everything, my strength for life Be the mother of your children as well as your wife She used to tell me all the time I'm her one and only But she ran with another man and left me lonely Where, You know, chick left him you know, And a dude why me and fell to the bed And reached for the nine and put it to my head I'm like, damn <laughs> <laughs> You never heard I'm like, he was about to kill himself over this chick um, and then 
and we see tragedy. Tragedy is live motivator for Make Control. Volume okay. One. Live motivator is dope. And uh, yeah, like that. It's a good song. That's the Ace. I don't care. You can get out of here. That's the Ace. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, now, In Control Volume One. Yes, sir. That's what really introduced most people to the Juice Crew. And so, and it's one of the first real like posse compilation mm-hmm. albums that you know, period, has ever happened. Now. What are you? Do you associate any memories to In Control Volume One? Yeah, I know what man. your big memory is, but oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The biggest is, is Symphony, but um, man, I, I think I remember having this on tape, mm-hmm. and I remember the first. I, I can't remember. Well, you know what? I take it back. I didn't have the tape. I got a dub of the tape because <laughs> I borrowed the tape from my boy, and. I listened to it for a while before I actually dubbed it, but um, I think, like you said, this was the first introduction to the, the crew, the posse album, f- kind of first compilation that I could ever remember in hip hop. Um, but um, the thing that that stood out was just how it came off. It, it the first song was dropping science. Dun, 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 dun. I mean, like I was like, yo, what the hell? Like you know, it was just. That was, and then here again, that's another saying that we used to have back in the day, man. I'm dropping science, you know. So it, it was not only was the song hot, not only was Craig G rhyming really well on it, but it associate we could associate it, one of our sayings with it was dropping science. Was real, that was a real cool saying back in the day. Um, and then um, another song that really kind of stood out to me was, I don't want to say it stood out, but one of my favorites for no no particular reason. It's because it was the next song that came up was uh, We Write the Songs with uh, Biz Mark and Heavy D. Mm -hmm. Um, And this was, as I mentioned earlier, when you have somebody, because I was a big Heavy D fan. And when you have somebody that you're you're a fan of and then you realize, okay, well, they're collaborating with this guy. Okay, he got in Heavy D's cool. So he got to be cool. And, you know, that was... um, I think that might have been the first time we heard the Fundidilla Dilla D, Heavy D. And um, I, I just, that was like, you know, because it, it was a little catchy hook. And I just remember I used to play it in my boom box and I'd be taking a shower. I'd be in the shower singing the songs or whatever, singing the hook. Um, but obviously this, the symphony was the uh, was the masterpiece of the, the album, man. But this this whole album, man, top to bottom, from, from those two songs to, like you said, Live Motivator, um, even uh, even freedom by uh, oh, by freedom was crazy. The, the the beating and scratching of freedom. Right, you know, and and I just I think. Stop chucking me, punk! Chucking me, kid. <laughs> right, you know, I just wish, man, and I know we we talk about it all the time. We talk about it in my show. We talk about it here. You know, I just wish sometimes at at some point in time we could get. And, and I don't know if it's because of our age or where we are in our life or how we felt at the time of the music when that music came out. But I would I would like to get that feeling back when I hear that kind of music again. I know we'll never hear that kind of music again and we'll never be at that place in our lives again. But um, yeah. like, man, top to bottom, man, it, it was a damn good album. Um, and and a lot of people. I think a lot of people nationally may have slept on it, but in South Carolina, where I was, man, everybody had this album. I mean, everybody. Dude, I remember dudes playing it, and we were trying to break dance at lunch and stuff like that. Dude had a boombox pop tape in. We trying to break dance off and rewrite the songs. I mean, just, it was crazy, man. I just, I miss that. And this was, if you don't have this album in your collection, uh, you need to get it, period. Yeah. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a, I'm a tell you, well, the other thing about this joint, it, uh, furthered the, uh, it furthered the beef between, you know, some people uh, mm-hmm. with the song because you had Duck Alert. And yep. for people who don't know <laughs> about Duck Alert, that is uh, dissing uh, <laughs> your man Red Alert. And um, that's... That's it's just that's just crazy, um, and whack it. Interesting thing about whack it by hey, Roxanne yes. Chante. This is this is how dissing 
this is this is how a diss record goes. She sacrificed her song on In Control Volume One just to diss JJ Fat. Mm-hmm. And and a little bit of some pepper, but JJ Fat, she purposely made a whack song. Meaning she had that beat and all that stuff saying basically Supersonic Y'all? Supersonic blew up. <laughs> she basically was saying Supersonic blew up and everybody loves Supersonic and that's just whack. So if Y'all like that kind of shit. Then I guess you're gonna like this. And she made a whack song, right? <laughs> and called it "Whack It." Whack It. She was basically like, "Look, if that's what you like, then I mean, she said in the song, then you're gonna love this." But um, I'm about to bug you out though. What's that? My favorite song on In Control Volume One is not the symphony. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Are you serious? What? I'm dead, I'm dead <laughs> serious. I'm not saying it's not the best song. But it is not my favorite song. Okay. My it, favorite. It can't be Keep Your Eyes on the Prize. No. That okay. was the second worst song on the thing. <laughs> my, no, no. My favorite song on In Control Volume 1 is We Write the Songs. Get out of here. We Write the Songs is not only. I would have never guessed that. Yeah. Not only is it my favorite song on In Control Volume 1, it is my favorite song that features Heavy D, period. Like all the okay. Heavy D songs. Okay. This is my favorite Heavy D song. So, I mean, when this joint dropped, that was my song. I got my man, call me D in the house. Can't forget my man, Booker in the house. Can't forget my man, Blue in the house. And yeah, yeah, the yeah. ball in the house. DJ Swan with the jewelry in the house. And we, and we gonna do a little something like this. Are you ready? Mic check. Well, I'm the original Beyonce ball. Down a record like collect and put your body in ball. This is a little something from the Juice Crew. From heaven, the boys and bitches, TJ Swan too. This is a little something from Bismarck E. To make you get up in D-A-N-C-E. That's why I came here just for you. To do the heaven D shake and the biz dance too. Now I'm a gift deep like Jacques Cousteau. And the stuff that I'll be saying is always stereo. That's why I introduce to you a doodle death rap to make your hands. Clap, feet, jack. I'm like the diabolical scientist, Mr. Fox. Send an educated super like funky rock. Cause I always rock stuff that nobody else does. That's why they call me Lee and you all get stuff. Cause heaven D say hi. Heaven D say hi. Hip a hip a heaven D say hi. Heaven D say hi. Hip a hip a heaven D say hi. Heaven D say hi. Heaven D say hi. I want to know if you can rock the disc at the show. Now, yes, I'm the smooth tip, the overweight lover. I'm on your radio, your magazine cover. Drink Coca-Cola, remain the rhyme solo. Always wear Nike once in a while it's for cola. Before I go to bed, I drink my milk and eat my cookies. Never like school. So I used to play hooky, New Jackson rap, the choose to call me rookie. The choice is the heavy D voice, now we can boogie. Lick the truth, deliver them. I, while on the same rhyme, I get close to them. So try my man, get off the mic and do the very bit of the Yo, yo, yo. I write the songs that make the whole world oh, All the ladies scream. Try Get the boys in bed, I wreck your body. My wreck is your poison. B I Z, M A Z, I'm a wreck. I'm about to wreck your body. I'm here to turn it up. Cause I'm the best in the world. I'm a Puerto Rican in effect. 
Lord of mercy, mercy, mercy. Every day in your party, party, party. Come down, Lord of mercy, mercy, mercy. Every day in your party, party. Now, Lord have mercy on those who curse me. I wreck for respect. But first, me and Biz Marquis gonna dance a little. So we should tend to build. Oh, I mean, you chicken little Joe. Can I get a little microphone check? One, two, three. And I am a DJ. And I'm the B I C M A K I E. For better, for worse, for not forgotten. Always stale, can never be fresh. So be for rock. So Biz Marquis say hi. Hi, what you wanna know? Yo, I wanna know if you can rock the show. Everybody sing along with me. Come on, everybody, come on. I meet up Symphony, like, yeah, I love Symphony, whatever. Uh, uh, Duck Alert, you know, a lot of motivated. But we write the songs, hands down, point wow. blank. So. That was my jam. Um, and the other thing is, people weren't doing collaborations like that. I mean, Heavy D was never on anybody's song before that. Nope. <laughs> And you know, know and um, got another show talking about uh, uh, EPMD show when um, LL was on Rampage. Right. LL was never on anybody's song. No, because you you didn't want to put him on it because you know he's gonna rip it. Exactly, and which he did on, on, on Rampage. Right. But you know, but you know, so that the Heavy D joint. Now, okay. The symphony. We gotta talk about the the, the crown jewel, and I'm gonna yes. bug you out again as soon as we finish talking about this. You, you're not gonna believe this, but um, the symphony. Now, did you hear the symphony first on the tape, or did you hear it on the video? Good question. Um, I heard the tape, but like the time between, I heard the the time between me hearing the tape and seeing the video, it wasn't that long. It might have been a week or two. Yeah. If that, so it wasn't that long in between. And this is the the dope thing about hip hop, like at the time, because and and I promise, I don't know for a fact, but I'm just gonna throw it out there, is that when the hip hop back then, you can remember where you were, right. what you were doing right. when you heard this. Now I'm sure for some people these days, they got the same feeling, but it. it in my opinion, I just, and I don't know, it just can't seem to be the same. Because it's like, you know, like, yeah, I remember where I was the first time I heard uh, Back That Ass Up. You know, it's like, <laughs> hey, do you remember the first, you know? So, but I remember when the Symphony uh, video dropped, because, you know, this is back in the days where you get home from school. You turn on Rap City, you're on right. TV Raps, you got your video tape in, you got it all recorded and paused, because you got to record videos, and so, you know, and that video came on, and what people don't know, this is your, this was your introduction to Craig G, mm-hmm. G Rap, Master Ace, and you did the other cool thing is because I I saw it I saw the video first. Mm-hmm. Okay. You didn't know Big Daddy Kane was on the song because mm-hmm. on the video they was all coming through the saloon and they they would pause it and show their name right. at the bottom. Right. They never right. showed right. Big Daddy Kane because he didn't he was a pussy and he didn't want to dress up in the old west. <laughs> but whatever. But you know they coming through the joint and you like okay. I don't even know who some of these people are mm. and and then the, the, the song drops and then you know you're going back and forth everybody's going and you're like damn and they passing it to each other this stuff never happened in songs you know next up i believe that's me and then you know and then at the you know g rap who had the right. best verse on the song is finished mm-hmm. and then Kane, everybody knew Kane. Yep. Then Kane came in, you yep. like, this song is and you you were bugging everybody, everybody loves this. I do not know one single hip hop fan. Oh, not even non hip hop fans, people that was around the area who did not like the symphony. We had talent shows where everybody would dance to the, the beat. That would be <laughs> their talent show. They'd turn that beat on and they would do scoob and scrap dance. <laughs> I mean, people freeze nobody disliked that song. Right, it's a classic. It, it it truly is a classic, and like you said, it goes back to 
you know, taking you back to when you heard first heard it. And I remember, like you said, I remember the video. And the video is really what set, you know, the, the song was already dope as is. But, you know, when, when you saw the video of Marley Ball, I don't care who's first or who's last, but y'all better drop this at the drop of the dime, baby. You know, I mean, that was just, that was that was perfect. That was hip hop. And, um, you know, one of the things that stood out to me, like you said, was the video. And I, until you just said it just now, I didn't, I didn't think about it yet. Kane didn't get in the, in the get up like everybody nah, else man, did. This man wasn't <laughs> even at the video shoot. He was at the studio. And, right, right. And, and it took me to like the second or third time to peep. It took me years to figure that out, that he wasn't actually in the video. He wasn't actually there on set with everybody else. Nah, yeah, and it took me about two, three times to look at the video to notice they were in the studio and the video was playing in the background. Right, right. I was like, right. man, and I was, I was like, man, this dude, he ain't even, he's not even a team player, man. He ain't want to, he ain't want to put the cowboy hat <laughs> on the, on the camera. That stuff, man. Yeah, I was like, get out of here. But um, yeah, man. I, I mean, as far as, as far as songs, you know, and, and we, I, th- I think we've talked about it before. It's just trying to compile like a, the greatest hip hop songs. Um, and that's hard to do, you know. You always, you, you would probably start, you know. I know, like I've seen, you know, the little documentaries on MTV and stuff, and they, and you know, they always have the songs like the message and you know, self destruction is usually the the probably the most important songs in hip hop. But I mean, you can make a case for this song, honestly, because it really, if nothing else, it bridged. For one, it it brought these MCs to a crew. And you know, under the guidance of Marley Mall, and then everybody was from, if I'm not mistaken, everybody wasn't from, from like a ha- couple people from, from Queensbridge, but everybody else was from like different parts of New York. So that was something in and of it, and that's something that people don't really talk about. Mm-hmm. But and and we'll get into it with the Bridge Wars, you know. But when you bring in people from different boroughs of New York, you have to be, you know, kind of. I'm pretty sure I don't want to say it was hard for them but like let's say you know Shannon's from Queensbridge Kane is from Brooklyn you know Kane got to represent but at the same time you know there's a lot of and we, we weren't necessarily privy to it because we're not from New York but this is something we found out later as far as how much each borough you know they they put a lot of pressure on them their MCs to represent where they're from and you know so what if they what if what if they were rapping and 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 uh, Shan said something about Brooklyn, you know. So now Kane got to step up. You know, you you can't have that inner beef within your crew. But I think um, I think that was one of the things, man, that stood out was that you know you had all of these MCs from everywhere. And for me, man, I mean, Kane had the ber- best verse, I think. You know, uh, <laughs> so, it's so incorrect. It's, it's, it's ridiculous how incorrect it is. I mean, that was that I, man. Let me tell you, he something. had cute lines. I'm saying, but the whole verse. I know you with G rap. I know you went with G rap. Come on, no, no. We're gonna put a poll up on the uh, site, everybody. Marley gives a slice. I get nice in my voice is twice as horrifying as this advice goes deep. Till you fell in a spell of a sleep. And while I'm counting the money, you count sheep. When G Rap strikes the mic, I recite the type, the height that you like to make the people unite. I rip off the hips and zip off lips. Step on reps. You flip and wanna sip on my tip. Take a deep breath because you don't have another left. Coming back like I'm revenging my brother's death. Making veterans run for medicine because I put out more life in a fight. The car and Medicine. Rip the damn cage like I'm on a rampage. So if you want rage, I'ma make front page. Read the headlines, suckers. The day's the deadline. Your head is way past bedtime. Can't kill no solo, cause you're still low. Soft like a pillow. My rap's rougher than Brillo. So fear me, don't dare, dare me. And don't compare me to him when you hear me. Talk about a battle, but you ain't yet ready for war. Your metaphor sucks more than a whore. You can't replace me, ice me, or ace me. Face me, face me, slice me. That I got force. My rap burns your mouth like hot sauce. Run for water while I break your tape for quarter. Serve the sucker. The order is manslaughter. Another rapper, G Rap Rex. He's rated X. The mean boy is sex. Next, the amplifier gets used and abused. Pump so loud, we might blow a fuse. This is anger, madness, ready to hang up. Rapper, a singer. I'm putting up my middle finger. <laughs> he blacked out on that song. It was like, he was just like, I, okay. you know what? You know what, E? 
I, I agree with you. I, he had the best verse, but I'm biased for Kane. So okay, I have your favorite <laughs> verse. Okay, got your favorite verse, but the best verse. Right. Okay, so, okay, so yeah, let's say it like that, just for the listeners. Let's say it like that. My favorite verse was Kane. The best verse was G Rap. Right, let's I, do it. Like and, and 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 I will I will I will say on the the Kane verse. As dope as G Rap's verse is and, and was, and you had the video version and you had the, the full version. The full right. version is just, just, it's ridiculous. It's I little, will say. About what, six minutes long? Something like that. Yeah, it's kind of long. But I will say that even with G Rap having the best verse, the cord in your ass thing killed everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it did. Because, because, yeah. and, and and the reason why is because in this era we played arcade video games. Right. So exactly. you say that right now, and people are like, I don't, I don't get, it. I don't. Right. I don't it's it's over their head. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, I don't know why that even, is even important. I don't get it. So, um, but yeah, the the, the symphony that. The, Legendary music, the beat, and everything. Now, here's what I'm gonna bug you out. The symphony is not my favorite Juice Crew song. Okay. My favorite Juice Crew song is Juice Crew All Stars. You know what, man? I, I think I want to say you said that before. On my show, yeah, I might. Have. I think you said that before. That yeah, the Juice Crew all. And, and, and me, matter of fact, it was me, you, and Rashawn. The show, the last hip hop show we did, you did say that, and I asked, and I was like, well, where did that come from? Like, and not that the, the Juice Crew also is a dope, is a dope ass song, but it's just you know it's not as popular, no, or not, as not known popular. as you know the symphony. Because see, and the the thing is. And this is how innovative the Juice Crew was, and, and Molly Mall gets props for this. That came out a year before the symphony. Okay. You know, people, they, they, oh, that came out after. No, this came out before the symphony. And I will admit, one of the bigger reasons is because Shantae is on it. Of course. See, Shantae's not on the symphony. She's not on the original. Yeah, she's not on the original. Yeah, she's not on the symphony, but she was on All Stars, and I mean, it had G Rap. Um, and it had, it had tragedy, it had you know, Craig G. And how I say, yeah, it had glamorous though. People don't even know about glamorous. It was yeah, a, I don't remember Gary. <laughs> I don't yeah. remember him. <laughs> no, it's a chick. It was another female. Oh, her. Damn, I really don't remember. Yeah, glamorous. Just stop. 
please keep my message. This is your last warning. Turn over a new reef, cause a new day is morning. So fighting MCs, you know who you are. My name is Craig G down with the Juice Crew All-Star. Juice Crew All-Star. Oh my goodness. Juice, 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 juice. Know me by my face. Now that you know me, why don't you show me all the respect that you owe me? Everywhere I go, I get a compliment. I guess it's the glamour that I present. Guys like my appearance and the way I rap, but they're too chicken and say they're on my strap. I know they're in love with the way I perform because I bring a sunshiny day from a rainstorm. They love my voice, they know I'm their choice. My raps and my beat all equal the poise. They never reject anything I say. They receive it and believe it, cause I don't play. When I rock up on the mic, I'm bound to go far. And glamorous is down with the two screw all star. Two screw all star. Oh my goodness. Two two screw all star. Oh my goodness. Two 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 screw all star. Oh my goodness. Two 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 screw. Two 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 screw. Two 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 screw all star. Oh my goodness. Two 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 screw all star. Oh my goodness. Two 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 screw all star. Oh my goodness. Less than hooping. Beauty queens are the girls I'm scooping. This is just a small rap representation. Down with the juice since the basic foundation. Blinded to the sight, to the touch, I'm scorching. Rhyme so deaf that they're worth a fortune. Bulletproof sneakers, a bulletproof vest. Killing like a villain from the old Wild West. Write one rhyme and for years you run it. I sit and write a rhyme when I'm done, get blunted. Come see a show, cause it ain't like others. We roast, don't roast, and we're close like brothers. You better hold your girl when the crew walk by her. If one of us is skeezing, we just might try it. If you wanna step to us, there's no half stepping. Just say the words and choose your weapon. It's time for me to go, I'm at the end of my bars. MC Shan, and I'm down with the Juice Crew All Star. Woke one morning, I became an MC to protest this matter. And always agree, cause if I ever caught a biter, I will enforce, cause I'm the chief. Executive, that means I'm boss. Similar to a beast on an MC rage. Any MC I'll abonish on and off the stage. Spread fear across the land like a nuclear reactor. Measuring the radius like a protractor. MCs label me as a mic manipulator. My brain is a bomb, my mouth is the detonator. But the navigator of the seven seas. With the mic in my hand, I mutilate MCs. See the width of my rhymes, calculate to a sum. Crease Bridge Projects is where I'm from, and I'm a. And I'm Symphony, incredible. And Control Volume 1, like you said, just a legendary uh, album. Symphony 2. Sucked. Yeah. <laughs> it did. It, it, and you know what, man? I think part of the problem was at the time, there was some hype, at least from what I can remember, there was some hype about it. And I remember my boy saying, man, they're doing a Symphony 2. They're doing a Symphony 2. 
I'm like, Symphony 2? Oh, shit. We, we got to get on that. So, you know, there was some anticipation about it. When I heard it, I was like, damn. Like, hey, are you serious? <laughs> hey, I mean, that's that. It, that's hard to... It, it, the, 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 the standard was set so high and the bar was so high. I mean, it, it was almost like it would, they probably would have done themselves a favor not even calling it that. You yeah, know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, the In Control Volume 2 itself was so bad. I mean, as dope, however you want to look at In Control Volume 1, whatever uh, adjectives, synonyms right. you want to give, In Control Volume 1, the direct opposite applies to In Control Volume 2. I mean, it's just bad. All the way around, just bad. I mean, you got other MCs. It's not in the juice. In Control Volume 2 was just was just terrible. He had people that was not in the Juice Crew, and it, uh, MC Amazing and MC Cash, and I mean he had LL on there, which you know if you're gonna have a goat, right. it's, obviously it's probably gonna be the best song on there, it's the greatest of all time. Um, but keep control with Def Jeff and King T, and I mean Grand Poop was on there and, and Tragedy, but it was just no, no. I think is, is all I can say. Yeah, it, it it was it was disappointing, man. And it's just, you know, I don't know what, what the what the thought process was behind it. If there was a thought process behind it, but um, it just didn't work, man. And, and it it kind of, for lack of better terms, kind of soured me on them to a degree. Because I'm like Marley, you you can't you can't put this out. You know, you can't have a like you said, you, it's it's, a, it's supposed to be a Juice Crew. You can't have a Juice Crew album with dudes that ain't even in Juice Crew. Yeah. <laughs> it's like having a Wu Tang album with Wu affiliates. Yeah, Shout out <laughs> to the, uh, the Killer Bees, <laughs> right? The Swarm. Yo, know, I you know it's funny, man. I got a box full of CDs. I was going through my box of CDs the other day, and I had the, the I, I came across the Wu Massacre. I don't even know why I bought that. I guess because it was Wu. But I, I don't know. Even... The Wu Massacre was good. Was it? Wait a minute, Wu Massacre is the joint that came out like last year. No, 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 no. This was some years ago. Wu Massacre. I don't know who's. It just says Wu Massacre. I don't know who's on it or well, anything. Maybe it's it's, it's something it, it's, else. It's like a Killer Bees compilation. Oh yeah, yeah, that's different because um, Wu Massacre came out in 2010, and that's a. Um, and if you don't have this, you need to get it. By the way, I don't have. That. I know exactly what you're talking. That's uh, Method Man, Ghostface, and uh, Raekwon. Right, right. Yeah, I don't have that. Yeah, I, you you have to get that. Okay, I get that. Yeah, it has a Met First Chef Part Two on it. Okay. Yeah, you gotta get that. <laughs> um, and it got uh, Criminology Two Point Five. That's what's up. Yeah, you gotta get that. Um, now let's get back to happier times about the Juice Crew because <laughs> In Control Volume Two is just awful. T.J. Swan. Yes. Our first. Our first singer, hip hop singer, you know, you know, no Nate Dogg and, and uh, oh, D, no. DV Alias Christ. Right. <laughs> Shout out to Alias Christ. But um, TJ Swan was the master of the hook, mm-hmm. and nobody. TJ Swan was just playing dope. Swan and Biz gonna make this party rock. Make this party rock.
and he got the, he got a shout out in the papers. Now you know, oh no, T.J. Swan was saying on my records, right? What is your favorite T.J. Swan hook? Hands down, make the music, make the music with your mouth, biz. I mean, that was uh, that was it for me, man. With, with, with T.J. Swan, I think you know his, like you said, he got a shout out. So when I and I think when he got a shout out in Vapors, and I saw the video, I think that was the first time I'd ever seen what he looked like. That was the first and last time we saw. <laughs> <laughs> so. You know, but um, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. You would know this. I I'm not sure about this. Did he ever do a solo album? He didn't do a solo album, but he had some solo songs. Okay, because I was I was told, or somebody, one of my partners said a long time ago, that he either was working on a solo album or he completed a solo album, and I never heard it. I'm like, why? Well, if he did one, I'll damn sure remember it. Yeah, but, he got a couple songs. I got him. Okay. They're okay. interesting. But yeah, make the music with the mouth biz. Um that, that that was it for me, man. I mean Swan just, you know, and his he, you know, his his falsetto, he was he was, you know, very melodic as far as his voice was concerned. And 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 again, that was something else that I mean we had hooks, but the hooks that we had, and think, you got to think about how the, the hook sounded in hip hop. There was nobody, there was, and there definitely wasn't any male singers singing on hooks. You might get a female singing on a hook, but you weren't going to get any male singing on singing hooks on a on a hip hop album in 84, 85, 86, 87. Right. You know, so you know, definitely ahead of his time. And um, yeah, I, I would have to say, as far as hooks, make the music with the mouth biz is uh, my favorite. Yeah, because I mean, you got uh, Make the Music. And listen, if anyone's listening to this and you have the version of Make the Music with Your Mouth Biz when, when Swan just goes extra on the end with the You're Gonna Make It, which please let me do it. Because that is like the original, original, original version. And I had it, you know, when it dropped, but I don't have any more. So if you got the You're Gonna Make It with Your Mouth at the end, you'll know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. that. But, um,. Uh, that joint, nobody beats the biz. Left me lonely. Albie Square Mall. Albie Square Mall. Wow. Hit yeah. you with the la 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 at the end yeah. of the album. Go shopping, go shopping, go shopping, go shopping. Swan and Biz, go shopping. You asked right. We made number one. Albie Square Mall is number one. Real more. Yeah. And, and that's, the, that's the beauty of hip hop. You do a whole song about your favorite mall. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's saying, okay, we can't, you know, it's not going to go to the consumers. Everybody's like, they're not going to buy. I man, come on, man. Yeah. Was, I, and, and the thing about it was, was that I don't think, like, maybe for the first. 10, 15, 20 times I heard it. I didn't know what the hell the Albie Square Mall was. No. I didn't know what it was. And that's, I mean, that, that's how dope hip hop was. You just, I mean, I'm going to make a song about my favorite mall, and I know I'm alienating the entire country. <laughs> but, you know, oh well. And, you know, we just wanted to go to that mall. Right. Yeah. You know. But it, I, and, you know, he didn't say it was, you know, I mean, if, if he did the song nowadays, he'd talk about what kind of clothes, clothes and, you know, oh, stuff you get in the Albie Square Mall. But now nah, it was just it was just it was a fun song. So, yeah, shout out to TJ Swan. Man, I, I I would, you know, when they do these little documentaries or behind the scenes, behind them, I know I know you're not going to do a whole behind the music on TJ Swan, but I, I would like to know what some of those guys are doing now. I mean, a, how the juice crew, where are they now? <laughs> Where are they now? How how are they making money? You know, are they still touring? Are they doing something? Are they working at a gas station? You know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, okay. Let's talk to Bridge War. Okay. Now, I got a whole uh, uh, post about the Bridge War. If you ever get a chance to check it out, uh, people listening, it's on the it's on the website. I chronicle the Bridge War from yep. the first song. Good post, and you know it's it's an order. Now, when did you realize there was a bridge war? Because <laughs> you know, um, a man put out uh, the bridge, and there was not a bridge war. <laughs> he just right. put out a song. I, I think, I think for me, man, it was. 
I didn't realize it was as bad as it like and I hate using the term beef but I didn't realize it was as bad as it, the, the blood had been as bad as it was uh, until like years after it had already passed because you know you're hearing the song and like I said being in South Carolina I'm hearing the song I'm like okay this is a dope ass song okay he's dissing the Bronx okay he's dissing Queens okay that type of thing but you know if you're not from the Bronx and you're not from Queens you really don't have, have an idea of and then I remember talking to my cousin who lived in the Bronx he was like yo we don't like these you know we don't like these Queens dudes and you know Queens this and that you know we don't like you know so it was the Bronx took pride in the fact that this was the birthplace of hip hop which you know where KRS came in and um as much as I like the Juice Crew uh <laughs> BDP was one of my and still is one of my favorite you know acts especially from that particular era and KRS one you you know I've told you this a thousand times is in my top five MCs of all time um I really didn't realize it was as big as it was until years later, but the, the, the significance I knew of, you know, as far as I knew that this was dope. I knew that uh, what KRS-One was saying, you know, was from the heart. And I thought it took, I, I just gave him, I gave KRS-One so much props because at the time there was nobody, I mean, Juice they you got to remember, they were riding a nice little wave right there. And it was almost like, KRS just kind of stepped in and was like, nah, 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 you're not going to do this right here. Not to me and my people and say that hip-hop started here, which, is, you know, I don't think Shan was trying to say that, but that's the way KRS took it. So, um, and, and, and you chronicled it very well in that, in that, in your blog. Um, I think, man, it, it was, it was a, it was one of the defining moments in hip-hop. I think it, it what it did was it, allowed for lyricism it allowed for competition and it made these MCs step their game up I mean like I remember and I remember like one of the first few times that maybe not the first time I heard heard uh, Karis one respond but you know when he said Roxanne Shante is only good for steady fucking I'm like damn okay you know you threw her in <laughs> hey, you know, it, it was hey man everybody was fair game <laughs> I'm like she ain't got nothing to do with this you know she was down with everybody now listen Shantae's response though is one of the most classic responses ever right cause she said you may remember the voice from a few years ago when I first came out in this UTFO I chill for a while I put down my pen but now some suckers from the Bronx got me started again now I'm not out to just a whole boogie down just a featherweight crew from that part of town you made a little record and then you start fronting try to just a juice crew but ain't hurt nothing now KIS1 you should go on vacation with a name sounding like a whack radio station Shame when Tila Rock said it short, he didn't mean his name. So step back, peasants, popping all that junk, or else BDP will stand for broken down punks. Cause I'm an all star just like Julius Irvin, and Roxanne Shante is only good for steady serving. And Roxanne Shante is only good for steady serving. Right. <laughs> I mean, again, he dissed the chick, and she like, and it was never really like, cause you a girl, it was just, hey. <laughs> We, you down with them? I'm dissing you, you know, and just, just, just great, great times. Now, we we agree that uh, BDP cares one won the won the whole battle, right? Oh, no question, no question, no question. Yeah, but you know, kill that noise was was pretty good. But you can't you can't really beat South Bronx and the bridge no, is over. Be, you can't beat it. And, and the thing is, is that look at what it did for his career. And I don't want to say it ended Shan's career, but it just it didn't have the same effect. And my um, man was my man was burnt that nobody else and the juice crew was really rolling with him. Right. You know, they I guess they was like, yeah, we from we from Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we ain't got nothing and, to do and, with that. And I've heard Kara's one say this, you know, before in interviews, you know, he doesn't know where his career would have been had Shan not responded. Oh, he said he wouldn't have had a career. It wouldn't have been a Kara's one if he wouldn't have responded. Right. You know? And you know, it's, it's 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 bugged out if you think about the things that could have happened because Karis One wanted to be down with the Juice Crew, right? 
so what if that would have happened? Then the Juice Crew, you know, would have been, you know, something totally different. Um, uh, Skylar Rock might still be alive. We yeah. would have never got self-destruction. We would have never got the, the, the Bridge Wars. Um, we, we wouldn't have got by any means necessary. I mean, so many things would have just happened off of that one thing. It's just crazy like that. And um, the other thing, the other thing that's that's crazy is what started it is Shans the Bridge. But right. that was the B side. <laughs> that wasn't even the out. That wasn't right, even the single. Right, right, right. That they right. was the B side. Yeah. And you remember what was on on the A side, right? It was B fighter. Exactly. It was LL. It was B, the LL. There you go. Let me rock this rhyme only if I may. It's directed to my man LL Cool J. Your brand new jam sure does sound sweet. You rock the bells, but you stole my beat. My beat. My beat. My beat. LL, is that it? again? LL the goat. This is why LL so guys, dope. Guys. LL didn't even pay this man any attention. He was just like, get out of here, whatever. It comes, I mean, he didn't even, he didn't even sully a track this and Shan's just like, eh, get out of here, Shan. Nobody cares about you. And then cares what just handled him. And the other uh, bugged out thing was um, Cool C and the Hilltop crew tried to get into it. Yeah, I remember that. And they got ignored. It's like, I got it. It's like, because like, they did, like, um, like, Cool Z, who are you? The Juice Crew Disc. Um, they did a Juice Cool Z, did the Juice Crew Disc. Now, the thing about Cool Z, which I, nobody really ever brought up, he sounds just like Shan. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, like, literally, if you hear a Cool Z song and you don't know, cool, you would think it was MC Shan. Now, Bob, Literally, I got music. It's like, oh man, I didn't know MC Shan made this, but it's not MC Shan. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's like, this is somebody you sound just like him. It's not even the voice. I mean, the rap style, everything you sound just like him. But they, he, he totally got ignored. He tried, he tried to diss uh, Shan and Shantae, and they were like, whatever, got it. Right. They weren't check they weren't checking for him, man. And I think that was kind of that had to have been frustrating to him. You know, you put out a disc record and nobody exactly. said to it. <laughs> you know, you're like that's that's the equivalent of you pulling a gun on somebody and they're like you're like, wait a minute, I'ma uh, yeah. shoot you though. I'm like, my God, get out of here with your stupid gun. I'm like oh. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, do you have any uh, standout parts of uh, uh, the Bridge Wars? Any favorite lines or any favorite songs? Um, I mean, the, the, the beat from South Bronx, uh, just really, it, it it just even to this day, when it comes on, like you just you, you can't help but move. I was at a, a, a old school party. Um, two weeks ago, and it was with the wife. And, you know, we, you know, the DJ went in his little old school set. Man, when he put South Bronx on. Man, me and the wife hit the dance floor. We out there doing the wop. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it was, like it was nothing. And I mean, it just, it, it, it Like I said, I, I don't know if if we'll ever get the feeling like that because maybe it was based on where we were in our lives at the time when this music came out. We were at at a very impressionable age. Uh, we were, you know, heavily into music, but, you know, and, and I look at, not to even, to jump off subject real quick, when I look at this generation, you know, they don't have that kind of music. There's, there's nothing that you could tell me that is for as dope as any dope MC that you think is out right now, that, that he's going to make that kind of music that's going to make 
his fans feel like how we felt back then. And I don't, and I don't, and I try not to sound biased or sound like the old guy in the room, even though I am the old guy in the room. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's just, uh, you know, like I said, you put you put South, you man, you can put South Bronx uh, instrumental on, and I'm on the dance floor. I mean, right. without without question. So I think for me, just the the biggest memories I have is just when you hear it, you still get that same feeling of, and, I, and I've talked to you about this before, even like when I, for me, when I listen to Eric B for president, every time I hear it now, I still remember the first time I heard it back in 86. So it's timeless. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and I think it will forever be that way. And same for South Bronx, uh, the bridge wars were, I mean, a, a very good, you know, battle, I think. And, you know, nobody got hurt, nobody got killed or anything like that. But, um, well, Scott LaRock did, but I don't think it was behind that. But, no, it wasn't. That um, was a whole other thing. Yeah, it was something else, you know. But, um, but yeah, man, my memories of, is just, just the music. Just the music as far as how they came at each other. And, you know, wasn't anything personal because I don't think that they, <laughs> I don't think they necessarily even knew each other, really. No, nah, it wasn't, but, yeah, it wasn't even really. It, and I love that about hip hop. And, and, you know, we, we equate this to um, what's going on or what was going on with the, the Kendrick Lamar uh, right. thing, which we're going to talk about at length on a, on a different show. But, you know, back then, if you ha- again, it was battles and not beef because again, it wasn't personal. Nobody was like, "I can't believe you said that." I'm gonna come and shoot you in the face. Right. It was you would battle. The people would say who won, and then you just moved on. It was, yeah, exactly. it, you just that like, was okay, it. all right, you got me, or they won't acknowledge it, and they just they just move on. It was just like it was almost like wrestling, like wrestling back in the day. It would be uh, Hulk Hogan versus Macho Man and they fight and Macho would lose and then they'd have a rematch and Hulk Hogan would lose and then they have a rematch, you know, they had a rubber match, the best out of three, and then whoever won that, you know, like say Hogan won. I'm like, okay, so then that, That's ne- that next week Hogan is fighting uh Tugboat. Yeah. You know, he's like, okay, I moved on. <laughs> and it's never even brought up again. It's not like, yo, remember last year when you lost the Hogan? It's like, no, I mean, we fought, we fought three times. He won two, I won one. Okay. So, right, I'm gonna go get this other belt. <laughs> you know, and that's that's how it was, you know. Uh, Karis one did his joint, Shan did his joint, Karis one did his joint, Shan did his joint, and then people were just like, yo, Karis won, and they're like, yo, PDP won. Everybody, you know, all right, so I don't need to make any more songs. I'm gonna make songs until you tell me that I won. <laughs> right, right, right. I'm a, and I'm gonna keep pump, I'm gonna keep pumping them out. It wasn't about you know calling the radio stations, taking a straw poll or a Gallup poll or anything like that or. You know, posting the stats on Hot 97. No, it was just about whatever, whatever the street said. If they street said Shan won, then he won. If they said KRS won, then he won, and it was, and that was it. And the other and thing is like, to 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 make it different from today's whatever you want to call this music. There's no apologies. Oh, there's no. Oh yeah, you know what? I'm so I'm sorry for saying. I'm sorry for being. Uh, uh, sexist by saying that this female was only good for steady fucking. Right, uh, right. I apologize to her family and I didn't mean. No, that's not hip hop, man. Let me ask you this: um, If you gather up everybody in the Juice Crew, all of everything that they made, what is the? We'll start with one. What is your number one album made by a Juice Crew member? And you can't include. Um, you can't include. Fight and gotta fight go with, one, uh, of course, you know my favorite is Kane. So I gotta go with uh, "Long Live the Kane." Uh, hmm. Still one of my all-time, you know, definitely my favorite Kane album. Period. Uh, it's just uh, it was groundbreaking, man. I, I think it was just it was something that really set apart Kane from a lot of other MCs as far as what he was doing, how he was doing it, his style. I hate to use the word swag, but his oh, no. you know, everything, his whole aura. <laughs> his whole aura that he had with him and the movement man and Kane had so many he had so many people checking for him and you know I, I think and I love Kane man I just think Kane Kane really went downhill when he started posing when he posed naked in that book of Madonna you know but uh but that's another story for another day but um shout out to Dark Gate but uh but yeah uh, 
<laughs> uh, long live the cane, man. That, that's that's my 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 favorite. Yeah, if 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 I had to pick a favorite, let's see. What, what do you think I pick? I mean, I know what it is. What do you think I would pick? Um, you gonna go with G Rap? Ah, if I had to pick my favorite album from an any Juice Crew member, I'm gonna go with Going Off. Biz Mark. Really? I'm Biz saying, going off. I'm saying that because wow, I did not. But that actually has a very this, people don't don't sleep. That's a damn good. It was as funny as Biz is, and as you know, happy go lucky as he was. That's still a good album. Yeah, I I would go uh, on a limb to say that, and you know, I'm just thinking this off, off the cuff, but Biz Markey probably has the best discography of the Juice Crew. Hey, G Rap's album. G Rap's albums were okay. Kane's albums were not classic. Kane does not have a classic album. He does not have a classic album in his discography. Long Live the Kane is great and revered, but it only has like three or four good songs on it. Okay. And and the next joint only had really like two or three good songs on it. But I mean, it revered because Kane is great. He's one right. of the top three greatest lyricists in hip hop history. Just like Rakim is the greatest in hip hop history, but his discography ain't that dope. <laughs> yeah, no, no. When you yeah, when you get past uh, let the rhythm hit him, you know, there's, there's starting to be a little drop off there. Yeah, so I mean, so I, but Bismarck, you know, Bismarck with the um, because you got to think he got the going off, which mm-hmm. is a classic. Then he got Biz. Biz Never Sleeps, which had Spring Again and Just a Friend and stuff right. on it, which right. everybody loves. He, and he then, hit. yeah, then he had, yeah, I, I Need a Haircut, which a lot of people didn't know about. But... <laughs> I, I vaguely remember that. You know, I bought that, and, and I, I don't even think I listened that five or six times. Man. But it had, the, it had what comes around, goes around on it, and that's just, that song is incredible. Um, but then he had the, uh, but that was the one that got him in trouble. And then he got the all samples cleared that had the young girl blues on it. Let me turn you on mm-hmm. was on there. Um, the I'm a ugly nigga <laughs> song. And see, by that time in Biz's career, even though those were good albums, you know, I think with the success of Just a Friend and Spring Again and, mm-hmm. and uh, those, I think people stop. Hip hop fans, I think, stop taking Biz seriously. Yeah. Now, you know, I can't say hip hop fans. But like the core fans that knew him from the Juice Crew was like, okay, man, Biz is, he's more funny man than he is an MC. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, no doubt. But but if, again, if I had to pick one, it would be um, going off because literally there's nothing whack on it. And I can't say that about, I, I might be able to say that about a G-Rap joint because 456 is incredible mm-hmm. and uh, Live and Let Die. But going off... Taking Boogers, Albie Square Mall, Biz Going Off, The Biz Dance, Vapors, Make Your Music With Your Mouth, yep. Nobody Beats The Biz, Something For The Radio. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't have anything whack on it. That's uh, that's probably the best album from the Juice Group, in, in my opinion, of course. Um, so, regarding the Juice Crew and, you know, anything else, uh, you got any final thoughts on the on the on the squad? Like, what would have happened if uh, Kane and G Rap jumped into the battle versus KRS One? It might have been a bloodbath. <laughs> <laughs> I think, man. I, final thoughts on the Juice Crew, man. I, I'm even though it's it's twenty something years later, I'm just as appreciative. I think I'm even more appreciative of what they brought to the game. Um, you know, because even to this day. You know, rappers and and they've always rappers have always been about their crews and everything like that. But this was the first crew, and you know, before Junior Mafia and Biggie, before the Woo, before you know, you Flip Mode, before all of these crews with you know one or two females, or whatever like that. This crew stood out, and you know, even the guy that both you and I deem you know not as dope as everybody else, like Master Ace. You know, he still could hold his own. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he wasn't. My face wasn't. Even the guys at the bottom weren't whack. And that's 
like what we talked about a little bit as far as like the comparison between them and Wu. You know, you take Master Ace over you guys. <laughs> man, leave or, baby you alone, man. Come on. <laughs> or, <laughs> or um, you know, so that type of thing. So I think, man, my final thoughts is I, I think people need to, and hopefully this podcast will help make that come to fruition, but they really need to appreciate, if they don't already, appreciate what they what they did for hip hop and, and I don't think that it was something that they necessarily set out to do because you know nobody wasn't trying to break any trends at, at that and that was one of the beauties about and, and about that era is that you just wanted to be heard you know it wasn't about money it wasn't about I mean yeah girls was gonna come but you just wanted to be heard and you wanted to be recognized as nice and you didn't want to be the last thing you wanted to be considered as is a biter mm. you know you wanted to be original and that's what that's what made the music so great and that's what made this uh, collective of MCs so dope was that everybody was different Kane didn't sound like G-Rap G-Rap didn't sound like Craig G Craig G didn't sound like Mass Ace Mass Ace didn't sound like Biz and so forth and so on you know um, and I think when you have crews like that when you have when you're able to, to put people together and we talk about volume one when you're able to <laughs> you know, just take a whole album and say, okay, you know what, this is just going to be our album. And we, we look at even, like, and you, you pointed out very well, even you look at Shantae, who is lyrically dope, and she could have done probably 10,000 other type of songs. Her one song was the last song on the album was dedicated to dissing these female and <laughs> <Yes. laughs> You know, talking about how whack they were. And she could have, I mean, she could have just really just blazed something, but it was still a dope album. And it's, it's, it's they definitely, the Juice Crew definitely has their place in hip hop history. Um, if you weren't familiar with the Juice Crew before you listened to this podcast, shame on you if you weren't, but definitely catch up. Um, look at their discography, listen to their music because it, it, they made some great music and it, it's a shame that their run didn't last that long, but I guess for us in that era, because there wasn't an internet or anything like that, it, their era probably, for me and you, it probably lasted a lot longer than what it really did. Mm-hmm. You know, because when, when you sent me the information, I looked it up on, uh, I googled it and, you know, it talked about how long the Juice Crew were active as a crew. And it wasn't that long, but for us, it seemed like an eternity, man, because they just came out with such good music. Yeah, and, and the individual you know, members, you know, oh, still definitely. kept going. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, final thoughts is like I said, Juice Crew definitely has that place in hip hop history, and um, can't deny it. Just can't deny it. No doubt. At all. It's out. It's yeah, it's just all. a good time. But uh, 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 thank you for coming on the show. Um, thank you everybody anytime, anytime. For, yeah well, we got some other stuff we're gonna plan up but uh, and thank you everybody for listening if you got any comments about the show leave them on the uh, site page um, eclecticrelaxation.com slash hip hop um, you can uh, tweet them at tweet rhymes life at 12 Kyle um, 12 Kyle radio show uh, give them the knowledge about the radio show oh, definitely uh Check me out on Blog Talk Radio every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we talk about different topics each week. Um, you know, any everything from hip hop to sports to sex, dating, relationships, uh, pop culture, um, everything. Uh, in, everything in and out of the sun each week right here. Blog Talk Radio, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you check me out. Yeah. So, so with that, with that being said, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna end this real quick and, and you know, get some juice crew popping on the outro. Um, so until next time, we out. Peace. <laughs> I remember those days in the past when the tone rock from blasting a bone box to your ass in the wrong lock. 
Listening to the voice of Sir Juice past curfew. A Friday and Saturday night virtue. You're not a DJ, so don't prepare handles. The radio's first one to ever clear channels. And us should live forever, kid. That's where it's at. Since your name is Magic, it's just a disappearing act. Mr. Magic, I'ma miss you. I love you, Super Rocket. Without you, hip hop just wouldn't be popping. You made me who I am in so many ways. And thanks for putting rappers on the radio waves. Here's my final farewell till I see you again. Now I spill a sip of wine for my partner in crime. Better meet me at the gate till then. I'll be missing you. Rest in peace forever from a fan of Super Listen, listen close. We arise while hip hop is winning. The reason that you're here with DJs is spinning this. Or you find yourself by yourself One man said it, there was no one else All I ever wanted to hear was world premiere I knew that the top of hip-hop I was there I just want to salute a leader of the Juice Crew But for the game was based on YouTube Obstacles we moved through Craig G verse strong You know when I'm speaking The rap attack I rhymed every weekend Then you would grab the mic and say There's a lot of rock stands But only one Shantae Now get him You were smashing right on the air Telling them to change the game Then they named it Cause it's out of here And all I say is that's my crew What up? Sir Juice forever That be you What up? And nothing we did was ever shocking Cause I'm Shantae And you're supposed to rock you forever That soul grow, he leaves his foes back to back. Friday and Saturday, looking back, I couldn't have it. No other way, cross fader going back and forth like click, click, click. While you proceeding and smacking off that lipstick, flex finally admit it. We used to put it on, I'm back up in the saddle. It's about to go on, The first DJ that believed in us, the first DJ played us on the radio. He had a golden voice, he was the people's choice. He had the crowd in the palm of his hand. Word is born, he was a phenomenon. Hip hop boss, the wonderful man. Just like a Roddy movie, we gonna 40 dudes. We're gonna miss Lucky, aka Sir Juice. We're supposed to realize why hip hop is winning. The reason that you're 